Hi Brooklyn's College, uh, it's so good to be back with you all again. Um, I hope everyone is keeping safe and well and everyone's family is keeping safe and well too. Um, we're in our third lockdown now and we have no idea when the restrictions will come to an end. With this in mind, I thought I'd put um, some tips together uh, for you to create a routine and um, try and get the best from the day as you're all working from home at the moment. Okay, so um, apart from eating a balanced diet and um, drinking lots of water and um, going out for your exercise once a day in the fresh air, uh, there are some other things that are maybe useful to you. Okay. And, and my first one would be uh, to create um, a workplace where you want to sit every day, like an inspiring workplace. So um, you can see that mine has some flowers from a, um, a client, some products that I'm working on for inspiration and motivation, all of my essential tools that I need, including my laptop and a notebook and some water as well. Um, this is so I don't get distracted easily and have to go rooting around the house for, to find things. Um, so it's good to clear the clutter away from your workspace um, and clean the furniture. This creates a, a fresh um, energy within the area and removes all the stagnant energy that you don't want building up. Um, it's good to have some natural light if you if it's possible for you. If not, uh, flood yourself with artificial light while you're working. Um, and your seating position is really important for you when you're uh, working at home. Ideally, you want your you you think of the body in right angles. You want your ankles in, and your knees and your hips in a right angle. So you want your um, heels directly underneath your knees and your knees in line with your hips. So um, if you feel that your knees are too high um, then you can raise your hips by sitting on a cushion and if you feel that your knees are too low then you can raise your feet by sticking books or a box or um, something underneath your feet to, um, to raise your knees a bit. So once you have the, the posture, the right angle posture for your legs, you want to think about your hip to your spine positioning. And a good way to find the perfect position for you is um, to do the following exercise. So you would just push your lower spine forward. So you've got a curve in the back area and then you curve your spine all the way back so that that curve is in the opposite direction and you do this a few times pushing forward and, pu and curving backwards and then you come to rest in the center of these two positions so this is a good um, hip to spine position for you um, this will allow you to stack each vertebrae on top of one another, um, creating a bit of space in the spine and um, allowing it to elongate. And then from here, you want to think about your shoulder positioning. And you, you don't want your shoulders rounding forward and you don't want them pushing back. So you want them in a nice neutral position and to find that neutral position, which they probably will, after you've done the hip to spine um, exercise, you'll probably find that your shoulders are in a better position anyway. But what you do is you leave your arms resting by your side, just hanging gently up by your side. Um, have your thumbs pointing um, up and uh, well, um, towards the wall in front of you. And then you just take your thumbs out and back and you'll feel your shoulder blades come together a little bit and then from this position you just relax down, just let your, relax your arms and hands and then your 
shoulders should be in a nice, neutral, strong position. From here, you want to be on the um, laptop or working on your laptop or computer. You want your arms to be parallel with your thighs and the floor. And that is a good, nice, good position for you. Um, your chin should be slightly drawn in, not jutting forward. And uh, you should feel as if there's an invisible string pulling the crown of your um, head up towards the ceiling. Now, I appreciate you are not going to stay in this position for the whole day, but it's really good to revisit this throughout the day just to encourage good postural um, patterns within the body. Okay, so that was my first tip. Um, my second tip, thinking about starting your day, would be to start your day with movement. Um, five to ten minutes of movement. This could be walking up and down the stairs, um, it could be um, squats and lunges, it could be um, running on the spot, high knees. Um, and if, you, if you're not really interested in dancing or, um, sorry, if you're not um, interested in exercise, then you can dance. Um, all you want to do is just raise your heart rate for five to 10 minutes. You want to um, increase the blood flow around your body because this in turn will inc increase the oxygen and the nutrients. Um, to your muscles, uh, your nervous system and your organs. So it feeds your brain and will help you with uh, concentration and focus. Okay, and number three is uh, probably the most important one. Um, and this would be to keep connected with your um, community. Humans are tribal uh, creatures. They um, seek validation from their peers, their friends, their tutors. Um, they look for approval from others, external resources. And during periods of isolation, this need isn't met, isn't, well, sometimes isn't met. So it's really important to keep the communication going with your, um, with your um, learning community. So keep in contact with your tutors and your peers, maybe set up um, a WhatsApp or Slack group where people can, everyone can contribute and um, keep in contact via Zoom and other social networks. Um, and just check in with your friends, just sending a message you know, just to see how someone is can be so um, uplifting for both the sender and the recipient. It just helps people feel supported and valued. So don't underestimate um, the power of a, oh, hi, how are you doing? You know, um, how was your day? Or um, just any kind of message, just checking in with people. And it, if you're feeling overwhelmed or if you're feeling low or you know that the restrictions are, um, are making you feel agitated, then speak to someone. Um, like share this with people. And you know, someone trusted, a trusted friend or family member. Um, and if you don't feel that you can share that with um, a friend or family member, then contact a charity um, like MIND or uh, Samaritans. Um, okay, so that was tip number three, and that will help you feel supported and still connected. Um, and so my tip number four would be um, keeping with the movement theme and that is uh, to move throughout the day. So you want to keep moving throughout the day. You want, like every hour, you want to get up and from your chair and have a look out the window or get a, grab a glass of water. 
or um, take a walk around the garden, um, anything that changes your positioning. The human body doesn't like doing one thing um, for a long period of time. It likes to change, you know. Um, we, our bodies were designed um, to hunt and, and gather and, um, and this involved a lot of movement, a lot of changing in motions. So, um, so yeah, just keep moving throughout the day, every hour or so. And there are some stretches that you can do at your desk, which will help as well. And that will help with blood flow and it will help with muscle aches. Um, I'm going to run through a few of those for you now. Okay, the first one is the side stretch. And what you do is from your good position that we practiced earlier, you would just hold the underside of your chair um, with your left hand and you take a breath in and you take your right arm up towards your ear. Now you want your arms to be um, soft, not locked. You don't want your elbows locked. And from this position, as you breathe out, you just gently bend over towards the left side imagining that your um, torso is in between two planes, panes of glass um, which stops you from moving forward or going backwards. And you just stay here for a couple of breaths and your arms nice and soft. And each time you breathe out you may find that you can relax further into the stretch and then you come to centre and repeat on the other side. So you hold the underside of the chair with your right hand and on um, an in-breath you take your left arm up alongside your ear and then on an out-breath you gently reach over to the right side. Staying here for a few breaths. Sinking further into the stretch as you breathe out. Coming up on an in-breath, lowering your arm on an out-breath. And then from here, we're going to do um, a spinal rotation. So you take a breath in. And on your out-breath, you take your right hand over to your left hip, turning your torso and just letting your head follow gently, looking over your left shoulder. Staying there for a few breaths, unraveling gently and then repeating on the other side. So take a breath in, and on your out breath, take your left hand, hold on to your right hip, turning your torso, keeping your spine elongated, and just looking over your right shoulder. And coming back to centre, and we're just going to stretch the neck, just gently opening up the front of the neck. So you have your fingertips at the base of your neck on the outer side. And it's just a very gentle movement, it's very light. You just run your fingertips up towards your jawline, and you will feel that your um, you will want to avert your gaze a bit higher and your chin lifts slightly. So you do this, working your way inwards. You do not cross the windpipe or the trachea, you just come to the side of it. Again, very gentle movement, really gentle, really slow. Just resting for a moment at the top once your fingertips reach your jawline. 
and then when it comes to the muscle under the chin you go to the almost the top of your windpipe uh, where there's a fleshy bit and you just gently run your fingertips again up towards the jawline and do this once more Just let your fingertips rest on your jaw and then drag your fingertips very gently towards your ears and then drop in your head and taking a breath in and then gently bending forward from your hips on the out breath we, we just end with a forward bend so you come all the way down Resting your chest on your thighs, letting your head hang loose and your arms hang loose so that the backs of your hands are just resting on your toes or the floor, wherever is comfortable for you. And you take a few breaths in here. Breathing into the back of the lungs. And then when you've had enough, you just bring your arms up to your legs and then just gently push yourself up vertebrae by vertebrae. until you're back in your good postural positioning. Okay. And you should feel a bit more relaxed and, and this should help you focus and uh, concentrate again. And you can do this as many times throughout the day as you feel you need to. Um, I would suggest doing it um, at least once a day while you're working. And my final tip would be take a break. Make sure that you take a break from your work. Take yourself away from your working um, space and indulge in um, a, your hobby or pastime for, for half an hour or 45 minutes. Or um, you can watch TV. Um, go for a walk, you know, do some more exercise, take a, um, an, a nap, um, 20 minutes and below is a really good time. Uh, you'll wake up feeling refreshed, anything over 20 minutes and you may wake up feeling a little bit groggy and probably lack, um, con well, lack concentration. So um, up to 20 minutes is beneficial. Um, you can you could even take a bath. Um, that's really nice and relaxing and will take your thoughts away from your work. It will just let your subconscious, um, if you have any problems to work through, then it will just let your subconscious think about these um, problems. And then when you come back to your work, you may find that you've got an idea which will take you forward. Um, or even a shower. Uh, clever scientists have worked out that taking a shower is the equivalent of a 10 minute nap. So um, you, you walk into the shower and once you've had your shower and come back out, you, you will feel refreshed and restored. So I hope you can take something from um, one of these tips. Um, and it's difficult times at the moment, you know, trying to keep um, that feeling of community going and feeling connected to people still um, and exercising um, and trying to um, just keep our healthy habits going can be difficult in times like this because we tend to comfort um, eat and snack and um, and then, and then we lose focus, and we and we become a bit lethargic. So, and then it's a you know a 
spiral from there. So um, keeping these little things going every day um, will um, hopefully help you. Um, oh, it's really good to be with you again, Brooklands College, and um, I hope you all keep safe and well. And I look forward to being back with you again. Namaste.